Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson, and this is part 5 of the Pathfinding and Unity tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. In parts 3 and 4 of this series, I looked at setting up a simple non-player character or NPC that patrolled a set of waypoints courtesy of a navigation mesh built within a scene. These were pretty straightforward, bordering on crude implementations, but enough for you to get something up and running. Now, each of these examples was reliant on a very specific constraint I set up in this series from the beginning. My navigation mesh is being baked onto one large plane and I'm carving chunks out of the plane using the nav mesh obstacle components. Now the thing is, that's not how environments are built. Game worlds are not one massive chunk of terrain. There are large numbers of individual pieces of terrain that are snapped together to give the illusion it's one area. So with that in mind, how does a navigation mesh work across these small individual pieces? We can build a nav mesh on each of these individual pieces of geometry, but what about being able to navigate across multiple pieces of geometry to get to a destination? Perhaps even more interesting, what happens when I start to leave gaps between the meshes? Can an agent navigate across those gaps in the space? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how Unity enables these features, including an example of a special component used within the nav mesh system known as off mesh links. First of all, how do we deal with multiple pieces of geometry? Well, the good part is that Unity largely deals with that for you, provided you run the bake settings correctly. So, in this example I have on screen now, I have a plane set up in the world. In addition, I've used the simple NPC that I built previously, as well as the simple destination location. If you're not sure how these work, jump back to part 1, where I make each of these from scratch. Now I've set the destination for the non-player character to be this destination object here. In addition, I've also baked in the navigation mesh on the floor game object. So nothing we haven't seen before, this is all quite straightforward, except that the destination location is not on the navigation mesh, it's actually over the edge and sort of hanging in space here. So what happens when I let this run? The NPC walks to the edge of the navigation mesh set up on the floor plane, but it won't go any further than that. It's also smart enough to not walk over the edge and fall to its doom, but ultimately it's still trying to get to a location it can't reach. So how about if we just add another piece of geometry that fits up nicely to it? So first of all, let's start by actually just duplicating this floor piece here that I've got. I call it Floor 2 and I'm going to move it somewhere in the scene that's a bit over here. Now if you want to snap another piece of geometry to it such that it's flush, you can either sit here in the inspector and start tweaking the settings accordingly. You know, is it 4 or 5 or 5.1? It's actually only going to be 5 units. I've prepared this example so that this one has to be at 5 and this one has to be at minus 5 and they'll set flush. But you can't always guarantee on that. Another way to get around this is if you ha hold down the V key on the keyboard, you can then actually grab an edge of a game object and then I'm going to grab it and I'm going to snap it to it here and you can see that it actually sits quite flush. Now if we run it again, try it out. It still doesn't work. Why is that? Well, if we go into the navigation pane, you can see that I've only still baked the navigation mesh for one side of this kind of two-plane piece of geometry. The navigation mesh has to be baked for the second part. Now, when I go back in and bake that second one, let's just go in and bake it. You'll notice that the two nav meshes link together. The nav mesh system is pretty clever and figures out that these two planes are next to each other, with navigation meshes being baked on them so it ensures that the two link together. Meaning that this time when I play it, the NPC now successfully walks from one plane to another without any problems. Now I built these two separately, but I can do it all in one batch. So if I actually clear it, I could select each of these items that I want, make sure that these are both being selected here, and then bake it, and it'll work out just fine. Alternatively, you can make your floor planes child objects of another game object, and then simply bake the parent, and in this case it will then bake everything together. So these two were both baked because that they are child objects of this parent object. Now there are still points when this does not work. Namely, when I have a setup like this. 
Here you can see I have two surfaces, but they're ever so slightly apart. In addition, when I bake the nav meshes, you can clearly see that these are now two separate meshes and they won't connect with each other anymore. So even though there is a navigation mesh here, if I try and move across it, it's not going to be able to move across to that other one. How can we then resolve that? Well, to do that, we can then use what we call off mesh links. Off-mesh links are special link-ups that allow for an agent to cross from one navigation mesh to another. This is ideal if you want to have an agent that can, say, jump between navigable areas or can fall down from higher to lower points in a world. Now, there are multiple ways in which you can place off-mesh links into a world, as well as a variety of configurations, given you might not want a non-player character to be able to climb back up from a drop that they've previously used. In addition, we can have them placed manually or automatically. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus just on the automatic construction that can be done by the nav mesh generation. So to resolve this example I've got here, I can tell the navigation mesh to create off mesh links between the two planes automatically. But these are limited by the drop height between the two locations or, in the context of this example, the jump distance. In the Bake tab of the navigation pane, we can change these two variables, as you can see here in the Generated Off-Mesh Links options. I'm going to change it such that the jump distance is around 10, which I think is a bit overkill for this example, but it should actually work out OK. And then into the Object tab, I have to tell it to make sure to generate the off-mesh links. Now when I bake it, you can then see these items here that appear. These are the off-mesh links. That's now showing if we are at one of these locations here, we can then jump across to this other one. When we press play, you'll note that the character now kind of jumps across, with the behaviour looking a little different as they move from one nav mesh to the other. Note that the character doesn't jump realistically, rather they simply move from one link to another. This is pretty much expected given it's providing us the functionality but not the visual behaviour. And you'll see the same thing in this example here, where I've actually made the gap between them even bigger. This time when it goes to jump across, it's still the same thing, it's just a bigger gap that it's navigating across, but we're still getting that kind of sliding behaviour between the two navigation meshes. Like I say, this is pretty much expected, it's just providing us functionality, not the visual part of the behaviour. If you really wanted to get that sort of behaviour where you saw it actually jumping from one side to another, you would typically require an animation system to give you that visual behaviour you wanted in this instance. You could actually configure it so that when you hit the off-mesh link, you trigger the animation that gets it to look like it's jumping from one place to another. So with this tutorial complete, we now have means to generate larger nav meshes across multiple surfaces and even link distinct nav meshes together if they're slightly apart from one another. This allows us to build more interesting navigation spaces for both players and non-player characters. In future tutorials, I'm going to continue this process and show more features of off-mesh links and how we can utilise them to create unidirectional paths, or you know, paths that only go in one direction, how to place them manually, how to create vertical gaps, and a bunch of other small tweaks that you can make to get the most out of your NPCs. This has been part 5 of the Unity Pathfinding tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more game dev tutorials. Plus, our channel is supported over on Patreon, so if you'd like to get access to our videos early, vote on new topics, and get access to original source materials, head on over to patreon.com forward slash tableflipgames. Thanks for watching.